I am not, Dennis Walt, I am not your financial advisor. I'm just some guy in a pool room talking about crypto and sweat coins. Bobby, Voyager Crash Next. I got to tell you, it concerns me, but what would have been really concerning is if I wouldn't have heard about that loan from Alameda Research. If that Alameda Research loan wasn't coming through, there'd be some stuff. And I even reached out to Steve. I go, hey, man, you know, you're always welcome to the show. You can come on anytime uh, and just talk about it. I go, I'm pretty sure legal won't let you come on, but uh, if you want to, uh, you know, talk to everybody. And he's like, well, I can't right now. I was like, no kidding. So that's what, that's up. Echoes from above. Where'd he go? Damn it. Everybody, uh, there he is. Echoes from above, follow his channel. Great, uh, great stuff as far as just the basic, uh, what's going on in the traditional world, the macro events. It's uh, interesting just to keep up. There's so many things going on there. So, you know, don't just listen to me because I could be totally wrong. That's just the truth. So get a bunch of information from a bunch of different sources. Could you do a deep dive on Kadena? I really should. That's a good point. Deep random thinker. Let me write that down. Does anybody see my pen? I'll just remember it. All right. <laughs> John Velasquez. One rollerblades. One skateboard. One just new shoes. Yeah, crypto autistic is crazy because that person, he must have a, a walking job. He, maybe he works in the Amazon factories, but he crushes me every month and it takes me off. So there's going to be a two and out process. So if you win twice in a row, which crypto test is probably going to win this month, sorry, then, uh, then you can only win twice. That'll give other people with normal walking abilities the chance to win. Uh, just a good question. Jung, Jung Chow, Jung Chow, do you feel England removing KYC requirements, which is, I think is huge, on wallets, because remember, not too long ago, they were trying to do KYC for all wallets everywhere. So your MetaMask wallet, you have to do KYC and AML. And that means that that wallet will be tied to you and they could track you whatever you do. And then they said, eh, maybe not. Is due to the influence by Tether, Tether back by pound, sounds sketchy and probably won't touch it still. What's your opinion? My opinion is this. I think there was a lot of outcry from a lot of different people and they buckled, which was actually good. However, that's just me and my naive way of thinking. Maybe behind, see, here's the thing. We'll never know what, know what goes on behind the scenes. Politicians and people in power and the people that pay those people in power will never know. So best guess is, you know, hopefully those are the people, but reality is probably somebody stepped in with a bunch of money and paid somebody off. Who knows? Don't sue me. That's just what I think. Christopher, my only friend. Uh, regulations are needed for guidance and we'll bring in the big money. We need it. Eh. I will tell you this, uh, he's right. And the second thing is they will bring in big money. But the third thing is that uh, all these VCs and these institutional investors, they're gonna bring in a lot of money into the space, but guess what they like to do? Take it right back out. So we love them when they give us all the money, but we hate them when they take it out. But guess what? They do that all the time because they understand the natural cycles and they know about this thing which called Ah, let me get this out of here. Take profits, which is right there. Take profits. That last thing, don't forget to do that. They do that all the time. Why shouldn't you do that? I know what you're probably thinking. Oh, but if I take the profits this one time, that's when Bitcoin goes to a million billion dollars. It doesn't work like that. I mean, I thought I missed the boat when, when Bitcoin hit 19,000 in 2017. And guess what? It was just 17,000 a week ago. Or not even. This is the last weekend. Yeah. Oh, Jennifer, I've been following you for years and it's cha. I don't know what that is. It must be. A, I don't know. Uh, let's see. I don't know if that's good or anything. I'm just not, I'm just not cool. I don't know what it is. Let's see. Russia is also producing an alternative Swift. Swift, if you don't know, that's what's, that's the uh, messaging service, which allows us to you know, fund all these different accounts and transfer money from one bank in America to another bank, or actually all banks, they use the uh, SWIFT system. It's an archaic system. It was uh, created in 1963, I think, in Zurich. I can't remember. And uh, that's what they've been using for the whole time. It's amazing. 
That is the technology that the banks run on. And of course, Russia doesn't like that because of sanctions. So they're going to develop their own. I can totally see that. I always thought they would go bigger into crypto. It only made sense to me for a while. Uh, Mike says, sell or hold Voyager. Are you talking about the stock or are you talking about the crypto? So if you're talking about the stock, uh, go follow Echoes from Above because he just talked about that today. Uh, but for the crypto itself, the VGX token, like uh, I like the fact that I'm in that high tier and I'll never sell that. Even if the thing goes under, it goes under, it goes under. Uh, and I just, because because for the Voyager loyalty program, it just makes sense for me to stick it there. I could sell it all the way, but I won't. And that's just probably me being a little stubborn. But also, I will tell you this, I'm not keeping more than 5% on that on uh, the Voyager exchange. We have rules. I like the people. We are friendly. We are friends. But we are not married. And I'm just here to make a profit. So uh, if it's between the family and my friends, guess what? Uh, I have to do what's best for me. And uh, that's me. And you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Rob, can you say another interview with Alex Mashinsky? Yeah, right. Now, that guy's incognito. However, if you haven't heard, uh, the person that's uh, doing the restructuring plan, uh, Simon Dixon from Bank of the Future, one of the Bitcoin OGs, big investor into Coinbase and Kraken and uh, Gemini and Bitfinex and all these different places, Ethereum, and was buying Bitcoin in 2010 for Pete's sakes. Uh, he is um, responsible for getting together this, this plan. And he's going to be on the show uh, either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday next week. We're trying to iron that out exclusively. So I got to love that. So let's hear what he has to say. I can tell you right now, I know he's got insider information or some great information that would probably behoove you to know. Rob went low or low. I have no clue. That's for the TA people. That is not me. Go watch uh, Ben from In the Cryptoverse or James from Best Answers or the chart guys. Seem to be pretty good. <sighs> ah, Echoes from above says, I got to be honest, I think Steve is a bad CEO, manager is bad. Agree to disagree. I think Steve's a pretty decent CEO, a pretty good one, especially with E-Trade. I could be wrong. But I will tell you this, one thing, good thing they didn't do that I know of right now they didn't get into DeFi and put in an anchor protocol and Luna UST and all that stuff. And it is interesting, though, that uh, you got to take a look at who's getting bailed out. Not bailed out. What's the word? The different institutions that are receiving the loans from powerful people, such as Alameda Research and FTX, BlockFi and Voyager and some other ones. So... Yeah, just be aware of that. See, though, so here's the thing. Joshua says, if Voyager goes under FML, you can correct this. Voyager, did you, you paid them fees for, for the crypto that, they, that you bought, right? Well, you don't have to keep your crypto on there. So if it goes under, it, it's, it's irrelevant. Unless you have stock, stock is stock. I, haven't, I never invested in the, the Voyager stock. I'm not a big stock person. But if you think that, hey, you know what? This might go under. This is your opportunity to say, you know what? I want to take some crypto off. And of course, some of that crypto uh, cannot be taken off of the Voyager exchange. And maybe you have to sell that and put it into some other crypto and then take it off. That's it. Throw something in the pool. It's a green screen. Come on. Come on. Uh, TND, welcome. You're never late to the party, Tesla. <laughs> Don't ban us. Oh, this is a great question. Poopster, which is a great name. Rob, would you provide liquidity? Let me stop this banner. Would you provide, would you provide liquidity for split token? Would you buy it? I'm having a hard time uh, understanding where profits where profits? I understand where profits come from for this project. Seems like it'll be dead in six months. It's a fair, fair observation. That's why I'm doing the deep dive very soon. So here's the thing. With Sweat Token, you have to understand, 
uh, that app's been around for three years and it was already free to download. It's been the number one app in 66 different countries, US being one of them. It's got, it, it only took seven days to reach 1 million crypto wallets when they put it out. And of course, if you wanna take a look at Steppen, uh, that took uh, much more time. And then near protocol and Ethereum and all those things, it took a lot longer to get those, those crypto wallets up. So a million wallets is pretty good. Here's the revenue generation. First of all, when you're on the app itself, and you'll see it when you download it, there's advertisements. And then also Reebok and Nike and uh, what's the other big ones? Uh, Dollar Shave Club and some other stuff. They put their items on there and you can pay for those with sweat token or have a discount. They also have uh, digital type of uh, apps that you can, that you can purchase uh, with the sweat token. So advertising, and I don't know if you know this, but uh, that's where the revenue from this channel comes from on YouTube. Just advertising on big brands. That's what YouTube makes their money, advertising. So that's just one part. Second one is a premium service if you want it. It's like 25 bucks a year, sure. Also, they're going to have not just in the beginning, but probably in Q4, crypto to crypto trading on the app. Then, then it's going to be a fiat on ramp. Then they're going to have an NFT marketplace. Then they're going to have business to consumer incentives, which allow like big institutions uh, to incentivize physical activity of uh, the users if they want to opt in. And then also, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, they're trying, they don't sell your data like Facebook did, but... If you wanted to, oh, I don't know, take the data of the things that you have there and you want to sell it to, oh, I don't know, your health insurance company because they have some kind of program which gives you a discount on your premiums, you're allowed to do that based on, and the DAO, which they're going to integrate in Q4, will have those things. So there's actually seven different areas of how they generate revenue. Now, could this uh, project go to zero? Yes, it could go to zero. Who knows? But I got to tell you, so far, it's pretty simple to use, and uh, I can see where things are going. Hopefully, I answered that question. All right. I'm telling you, it's a green screen. Let's see. Ah, Chazik T, you cool kids. I cannot keep up with you. Hmm. Tammy. Hey, Rob, love your channel. When they roll out CBDCs, how will we be able to buy crypto? Well, Unfortunately, at the digital yuan, the CBDC in China, you won't be able to do it like that. CBDCs in uh, Europe or EU and the United States, we'll see how they rule those out. I think the big thing is how much privacy are they, gonna, are gonna, are they going to uh, put into? Now, hear me out before you start ripping me off, ripping me apart and go, there's going to be no privacy. Um, the he former head of the CFTC, or was the OCC, Giancarlo, crypto dad, he was talking about the digital dollar. And he says, look, there's two ways to do it. Straight observation and communism, uh, just like uh, China, essentially, where they have a social, uh, social score. And if you fall too low, then of course they turn off your wallets. On the other flip side of that is uh, complete autonomy and they give security. And he said, if they can do that with a digital dollar, and again, this is Giancarlo, not me talking about it. He goes, if we can do that with US dollar, that would be a tremendously useful CBDC. Now, will that come to pass? I don't know. Would you trust the government? Probably not. <laughs> if you're here, probably not. Then I'll, off we go. So yeah, uh, will you be able to cry, buy crypto? Not in China, probably in America, and who knows in other places. It's just a big guess. Near or Seoul, which have the higher upside longer term. I like Near. I met the CEO in Austin. I see he's, he's, he's a little more down to, well, I don't know the other CEO from Solana. I can't really say it, but I liked him because he's like, look, we got a lot, we got a long way to go. There's a lot of issues that are coming up. And if we don't do sharding, it's not going to really work out. We need to do this, 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 and this. And I was like, yeah, that's true. I like people who can be self-deprecating and say they're not, it's not the most awesome project and there's a long way to go. Poopster again. Why would anyone buy the dip right now? So you'll likely have three to say to buy the bottom instead of catching volume. Yeah, it's true. So I used to be the buy the dip guy. And then I was realizing like, wait, wait, wait. This is a bear market. We shouldn't be buying dips. So like I haven't bought one since, I don't know, January, February, somewhere around there. I'm just waiting. I think we're going to go down farther. But um, instead of dollar cost averaging every day, 
uh, I'm not that smart. So now I still cost average once a week and just go from there because I don't know. I, I don't know where it's going to be. Like last week was my day when I hit 17,000. I actually caught Bitcoin at 17.6, but that's just luck. It's just luck. So uh, that was my DCA day and it worked out. Next week, I'm, I'm my DCA and it's 30,000 and then it goes on to 20. I have no idea. But I think the three, five, 10 year time frame probably work itself out. Russia's going back to the 70s, maybe, perhaps. Uh, okay, this is a good question. Cryptoman, is our FDIC cash? And he's talking about dollars, not USDC, still safe if it all collapses? Yes. So as I understand it, do your own research, but on their website, they're saying that all dollars, dollars, not stable coins, are protected uh, USDC. And that means up to $250,000, as I understand it. Again, look on their website to double check, but that's uh, as I see it, yes, which is backed by the US government. Oh, now you're not afraid of it. Now you're okay with the US government, huh? Oh, well, if the FDIC, then that's fine. But the rest of the government, pfft. sure. Uh, anyone else know if you have a crystal ball? Everybody likes to have a crystal ball. The only place that has a crystal ball is breaking points. That's the only place that has a crystal ball. Throw something in the green. I'll knock the green screen over. What are you crazy? And then you'll get to see that I'm living in my, my mom's basement. This is not something I want to show people. Uh, yeah, so I, Brandon, I, I talked about this. I think they're just fine right now uh, because they got this big fat loan. But you gotta understand, I mean, like the people behind Voyager, they got a lot of contacts. And that's just years and years and years of, of being in, in these uh, trading platforms. Again, Steve, CEO of E-Trade, worked out okay. I think E-Trade's still around, which is crazy. No, green screen. Uh, Kevin, any chance you can arrange a limited ledger discount code? There's actually a, yeah. I think if you use my code, you get like 10% off. I think it's in the description. Again, affiliates. I gotta tell you, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I'm on fire with the shilling today. Doing pretty good. C -c 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 King of the shill. Uh, let's see. Love you too. Should I buy Apple stock or throw an Apple? Uh, I don't own any Apple. <laughs> the only thing I want is gummy form. Yeah, Des, smash those likes, please. Get off Voyager now. Buy Voyager. Hey, what? All right. Uh, if you hold a crypto coin and the regulars declare they have class that crypto is a security, what happens if the coin become worthless or run into a stock? That's a great question. So people are always, they're always fearful. They say, well, hold on. They say, man, that's going to suck when, you know, when uh, Uncle Gary comes down and says, okay, everything is a security except for, except for Bitcoin or everything is a security except for Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever, whichever way is going to go. So what does that mean for these exchanges? Well, what it means is that they have unregistered securities. They're selling unregistered securities. So there's going to be a refractory period. And this was, this was I think, in the, in the bill that was just put out by Senator Lummis from Wyoming, where there's going to be a time when everybody can transition uh, into going from a crypto, a commodity, whatever they classify now, into a registered security and which means a lot of paperwork, which means a lot of lawyers, which means a lot of money, let's be honest. And I don't think, so first of all, what it'll probably do is that there'll be a time frame when the exchanges are gonna have to say, look, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna keep this on here? Or are you gonna sell it? Because we can't, at some point, you're not gonna be able to take it off because it's a, it's a security and we're not registered to sell securities. So at that point, they'll have to give people options. They're not just gonna like shut it down and keep all your money. 
that would be illegal. However, who knows? But uh, if the U.S. government's going to do that, there should be some, some time frame when they uh, give you options to do whatever you need to do to, with your crypto. Probably have to sell it and buy it back. Raz, so do you as a YouTuber feel responsible for the products that you promote, even though their future is not in your hands? Am I responsible for the projects? I want all projects that I talk about to do well. And why would I want that? Because I own them all and I have skin in the game. So there is nothing on this channel that I talk about that I don't own. Well, except for that Euro coin, because I can't get it right now. But I do own USDC and I do own VGX. And, and for Sweatcoin, I'll be buying into that project uh, big time. And that's it. And uh, so... Do I still feel responsible? I think I feel responsible for my economic well-being. So I'm, but you got to know I'm biased, right? I mean, come on. And that's the big thing. Uh, I'm biased because I own it. So if I'm talking about it, I own it. I make no bones about that. I think everybody knows that. And I think what a lot of people don't like is like when I don't, when I talk about a coin that is not their coin, they're like, well, how can Rob talk about that crap project? Why doesn't he talk about XYZ coin, which is one that I own? So that's what it is. I hope I answer your question. Uh, Soul founder dump coming. Yeah, and don't forget those unlocks for... Does everybody know how to do unlocks? To, to find the unlocks, the cliffs, and uh, how, to, how to see the unlock schedules for each of the crypto digital asset projects? Does everybody know how to do that? Tell me in the comments. Jesus, there's a lot of comments. Okay, Manny, I'll play the game. You kind of wrecked your audience. Which part? Uh, Amazon just massively lose shares by 21. Yes, they did. I think it'll go up though in a little bit of time. We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> so this is the unlock schedules. Let me just show everybody real quick. So this is what it is. Let me get out of here. So thus, unlock schedules. If you go to, let me share my screen. We got a couple minutes. Da da da. Masari. We got a Masari, and you can sign up for a pro account, I guess. But I don't. You don't need one for this. So you go to the the assets. And whatever you want to take a look at. So we'll take a look at Solana. And we'll go to the profile and the token economics. And you can, let's see. So here was the initial distribution of Sol. So it was almost 16% to seed round investors, probably some VCs and people got in early, right? To Two and a half percent to founding sales, five to validators, one to da 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 da. Twelve and a half percent to team members. That's a lot. Twelve and a half to the Solana Foundation. All right. And thirty-eight percent of the community reserve. All right. Here's the seed sales. This is the dates. These are the time frames. This is the breakdown. Founders and projects, rewards, investors. Okay, great. Here's the supply schedule. This is where it comes down to. So you want to take a look at what's the cliff. The cliff is before the people. The cliff is. People can buy in, but they got to wait a certain amount of time before they can start to sell it. That's really what the cliff is. So you can see right here in 2020, it's probably why it did so well, I'll be honest with you, because there wasn't a lot of dumping. But then, of course, that's when we hit here, 2021. You saw some more, just a big, that's a big wallop. And of course, not that people could, would sell on January 2021. I mean, some could, but there's a lot of crypto that got, went into those hands and then it just keeps going up. But again, like right over here, this is, oh, this is staking rewards. Founders, pretty flat once you get to a certain point of 
Oh, it's still going up. Uh, Grant Pool, Community Reserve, Solana Foundation, Seed Sale. Uh, seed Sale. But it's still flat. So it all kind of came up right here. But there's still more here. So that's just on the watch. You can do that for any crypto project that you want to see. So I hope the, hopefully that helps. Let's see. You wrecked yourself. I don't feel wrecked. Best wallet for Cardano. I just use uh, Daedalus. I just like it, even though it's slow. Like for the download stuff, super slow. Has some accountability. Sure, okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Robert, you got to watch a lot of videos. Don't just... I can't just tell you that I own it and that's it. You got to make that decision for yourself. Yeah. Amazon stock will continue to rise. I still own a bunch of it or a little bit, I guess I'd say, compared to some people. <laughs> Rob thought it was a down and no lights. Only on happy hour. Yeah. I do not have a good cake recipe. Here's a good one. Wait to buy Tesla. We'll go lower. Car deliveries will go down a bit due to supply chain. I got to agree there. That doesn't make sense, actually. Uh, supply chain issues. What? Tesla was weird that Elon posted 7-Eleven gas prices and the stock closed at 7-Eleven. I don't know if that's true, but it's interesting. Ah, this is a good one. Dave's diabetics. Is your DCA setups automatically or do you do it manually? And do you purchase daily, weekly, hourly things to good? So mostly what it is is just automatic. And that's why I like Voyager so much because I just set it up. I'm like, I want to buy Voyager on Sunday, uh, this amount, and do it every week. And it goes. However, there's a time that I switched over because remember we talked about this. I knew the CPI numbers were coming out. I thought that I'm like, I don't think inflation is under control. But I think the CPI numbers are going to be high. And they were. And then when they came out, the price dumped, and then I bought a little bit there. I said, you know what? Jerome Powell is still going to talk on the Federal Reserve. I still think there's a little bit down, downward to go. So then instead of dollar cost average every day, I just saved my money. And then the day that Jay Powell came out and said, yeah, we're going to do this, and he did that, or I think it was 0.75, then it dumped even more over the next couple of days. And I just picked it up uh, as it started to cascade down. Now I'm just doing once a week because – I don't know if we're in the absolute bottom and no one can tell you. And if my plan is just to accumulate what once a week until the Fed pivots and they say, you know what, that's as good as we're going to do with, with, uh, with the uh, rates and we'll start to taper off and the quantitative tightening, all that good stuff. That could take a while. And sometimes it's just good just to sit on the sidelines and do nothing. Rob, can you log in with two ledgers at different times on a single at different times on a single device? You have to switch things out because I got multiple ones, and you have to use Ledger Live. And Ledger Live will only work with the one with the mnemonic phrase that you have. So you have to kind of just move them together. I don't think you do it at different a single device. Even on a single device, because I do it, but at different times, yes. What? Bitcoin's under twenty thousand again. What did I do? Eh, it went up again. Pulse X, Hex. There's always a Hex again somewhere in the chats. Rob, for a 10-year time frame, would you DCA ETH, ADA, Sol, or stick with old Bitcoin? Here's the thing. The longer I'm in crypto, the more I realize that Bitcoin is just the safest bet. And sometimes the guy with the, with the least hassles is the winner. So some days I'm just like, ugh, just Bitcoin and that's it. But then I realize that there's some pretty big gains that be had on some altcoins. And there's some really big gains to be had on degenerate plays. But those are risky and uh, you'll probably lose all your money. So uh, these days it's pretty much Bitcoin because, and I'm not even buying that every day. So I'm waiting for the accumulation phase. But as time goes on and Fed pivots, I'll get another altcoins, just not right now.
So I won't stick with Bitcoin forever because there's other stuff out there. And I only am willing to invest when I'm okay to lose. Uh, thank you, Kirk. Mind sharing your view on the length of this crypto winter? Well, first of all, we've never been uh, recession, recession, and we're not formally in a recession yet. So it'll be interesting to see. Even with uh, coronavirus in uh, March, around March 2020, that was short lived to be sure. Um, so, well, I sh I've shown this many times. Spam. And it looks like this. If we if we look at just the times of downturns and bear markets and recessions, they usually last about a two years to a year and a half, like they do right here. 81 to 82, 90, 91, 2001, 2007, 2008, 9. So roughly two. So if I'm going to say pick a time frame, probably about two years, which again, everybody says this time is different. It's not different. It's always the same stuff. It was two years in 2014 and 15. It was two years in 28, 2018 and 2019. It's going to be two years, I think, in 22 and 23. And we're going to see it again in 26, 27. That's just how I see it. Oh, really? Bankless vid interview with Mark Cuban. Good for those guys. <laughs> Coinbase probably is safe. Yeah, maybe. I just don't know. And even if you look at their terms and conditions, and this was just put out about a month ago or so, and it says if they're in bankruptcy or they become insolvent, that uh, they can use your crypto to essentially dig them out of the hole. So just so you know that. And that's exactly the same language that Celsius had. So how do you combat that? It's pretty simple. Uh, it's all gone. 100% scams, nothing on the exchanges, no leverage, take profits. Very simple. I don't know why it's... I don't know. And then, so Ray says, I have 10K in Voyager. I'm in the process of moving every Satoshi. Look, I mean, it could be nothing, the ones I talk about, but, you know, it, I think it's better just to, to be safe than sorry sometimes. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. And just, do you move it back? You know, you want to gain the yield? You say, okay, well, everything's good. But, I mean, with Celsius, uh, you know, that video could have been put out a little earlier by me. But uh, I saved a couple of people, I guess. That's it. And who knows if it's all, it's all gone and whatnot. Time will tell. All right, everybody, it's been an hour. This is too long. So thanks so much for stick stopping by. I do appreciate it. Like today's video, thumbs up, uh, subscribe. I think they're time sensitive. That's it for today. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.